I was pleased when the committee for the 200th anniversary of the church asked me to share some reflections on our time in Sumter. First, let me extend congratulations from both Libby and me to all of you who have worked so hard to bring this year-long event around. It is indeed a most memorable time for this great church. I can recall when the pastoral nominating committee first contacted me, I was not very excited about the prospect of coming to Sumter. You see, the church had experienced some rather negative publicity from the national press regarding its positions on race relations. And living in Charlotte, we had heard all about that. We had read about it in the newspapers and seen it on TV. And so right at first, I was not so cordial to the committee, but as I came to know personally some of its members, such as Fred Brogdon and Harry Harvin and Hubert Osteen and some others, I became impressed with them and their vision for the church. On more than one occasion, I heard them refer to the church as a sleeping giant that needed to be awakened, that it had so much potential if it could ever be waked up. And they explained the church had done some serious soul searching and wanted to extend its ministry more thoroughly to the community. Well, I warmed to their goals for the church and in 1980 accepted a call to First Presbyterian of Sumter and we stayed for 12 wonderful years. The leaders of the church were very serious when they told me that they wanted to see the church grow, to move from being rather ingrown to looking outward and fostering positive relationships with all of Sumter County. The committee wanted to develop a deeper commitment to Jesus Christ and to serving the greater Sumter community, and they asked me to come and be their pastor and lead in those efforts. Well, I've known some committees who have spoken with potential candidates for pulpits, and they have spoken of all the wonderful and glorious things they were going to do and how they were going to support the pastor and all of that sort of things. But uh, I would say that when they came to the church, so many of those pastors I've spoken to said, the committee said one thing and something else happened. Well, I can say that the members of this committee that call me backed up their words with a very strong commitment. Early in our ministry, we began seeing more homeless people show up at the church and determine the need for a homeless shelter. The associate pastor at that time was Gwen Pratt and Gwen and I went to the session and presented a rather detailed plan as to how the shelter would work. And the session agreed that we could begin this ministry. So many of our members helped the staff and helped the shelter and we provided meals in the first few years until we could get a broader support and finally a grant from the United Way. Members of our church were so diligent in coming to the shelter at night and staying with the people that were guests there and preparing meals. But that was the very beginning of the Samaritan shelter of Sumter. Not long after that program was off and running, Helen Probst came to me and she described a new national program for seniors that had just taken off in the Midwest and was beginning to spread. It was called the Shepherd Center, and she was wondering if we might start one of those in Sumter. Well, once again, we went to session and told them of Helen's idea, expressing how we could collaborate with other churches and begin a ministry to the senior citizens of the community. And Trinity Methodist Church stepped up and said they would provide a home for the center and this ministry took off. Meanwhile, I had been reading a book about a guy by a guy down in Georgia by the name of Millard Fuller. Millard had started a unique organization called Habitat for Humanity, helping to build low cost homes for people who could not get a traditional loan from a bank. Receiving the endorsement of Session and working with a number of people and especially with George Jacobs and Bill Calloway, whose efforts were extraordinary, one of the earliest chapters of Habitat was established in Sumter. Hurricane Hugo, which hit Sumter in 1989, did massive devastation to our community and to our church. More about the church and Hugo in just a moment. Hugo brought money and resources from all over the country, which we directed to Habitat. This gave the organization a kickstart and soon 30 new homes were quickly built. Since the establishment of Habitat in Sumter in 1987, by the year 2022, 
126 homes have been built providing decent, affordable housing for persons who could not otherwise afford a home. Just before Hugo, our church began a major expansion and renovation project. We were having about 600 in worship most Sundays and were running out of seating capacity. And so we enlarged the balcony and knocked out the chancel wall, extending the sanctuary toward the educational building. The chancel wall had just been removed when Hugo hit and the building buckled a bit doing some structural damage. We ended up worshiping at the Sumter Opera House much longer than originally planned while the sanctuary was being repaired. When it reopened, it was beautiful. It featured a new Schantz organ with pipes framing the stained glass window, a centerpiece of the sanctuary. We continued to have more in attendance than we could comfortably seat, and so we added another earlier service. After we got back on our feet, things had settled down a bit following Hugo. Fred Brogdon came by to see me one day to discuss something that had been on his mind for quite a long time. He said, Jeff, when our people get to be a certain age, needing long-term care, a lot of them move down to that Presbyterian retirement home in Somerville. I think it would be great if we could get a retirement village of some kind here in Sumter. Consider it, pray about it, and see what you think. Well, I agreed with Fred, and the session said that we could hire a consultant to do a feasibility study to see if there was a need for a continuing care retirement community in Sumter. Following that study, it was found that such a community would thrive here. And so once again, with session approval, several of us approached most of the churches in town, along with Temple Sinai, to see if they would support us in this endeavor. The enthusiasm was contagious, and that was the beginning of Covenant Place. I've always said that Fred Brogdon Sr. was the founder of Covenant Place. He's the one who planted the seed and it became the retirement home for a good many citizens of Sumter. First Presbyterian established closer ties with Temple Sinai, sharing Thanksgiving services and having the rabbi teach Old Testament in our church school. We found we had many deep ties with our Jewish sisters and brothers in Sumter. We also developed a stronger relationship with the African-American Presbyterian churches in the area and had pulpit sharing services with them from time to time. During our time in Sumter, reunion of the Northern and Presbyterian churches occurred in 1983. Our church was asked to take the lead in helping to form a new presbytery, which would be called New Harmony Presbytery. As a result of a strengthened relationship with our African-American sisters and brothers, reunion and the formation of a new presbytery took place with no conflict and New Harmony Presbytery became a very appropriate name for this emerging entity. First Presbyterian was honored when the PCUSA General Assembly presented the top award of our denomination, the Ecumenical Service Award to our church. And shortly after that, the NAACP of Sumter County presented our congregation with their Distinguished Service Award. With this, we were grateful that our church had come so far in the area of race relationships. Many of the programs that our church established and offered were not to receive recognition, but to give glory to God as we sought to proclaim the name of Jesus and serve our sisters and brothers in the Sumter area and beyond. First Presbyterian was able to accomplish a number of other significant things during our time here, but these are just a few of the highlights. On a personal note, we can say that the 12 years our family spent here were some of the best of our lives. The people in Sumter are some of God's finest anywhere, and the love and cooperation we received here are without parallel. Libby, Stephen, Cameron, and I can all say we are very grateful to God who gave us the opportunity to live here, to work here, to grow here, and to do ministry here. Before concluding, I will mention that there is a longer version of this script that goes into much more detail, which I'm guessing will be filed in the church archives for those who may be interested. 
In Philippians 4, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Revising that just a bit, I would say, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Thanks be to God.